Spongy Bob. Spongy Bob. You know, I never knew how to pronounce the name of the character properly, as I had a strong Spanish accent as a kid, and I wasn't allowed to watch it either. Anyways, hello everybody, it's Book of Alice. You know, ever since I started to do icebergs, I've noticed that I tend to cover the ones based on cartoons. And since I've basically covered all of the Cartoon Network hits, I know I need to do the Spongebob one now. It's like a requirement. Plus, this series is a freaking classic, and I wanted to do it anyways. So without further ado, my dudes, today we will be going over this super duper extensive Spongebob iceberg full of lore and mystery. Oh, heck yeah. Anyways, go grab a beef jerky steak and a Mountain Dew, sit down, and watch all of this video. Let's go. Spongebob and Tehran. Spongebob and Tehran is referring to the three Iranian animated bootleg films of Spongebob Squarepants. I don't know what else to say about this entry other than they look rather entertaining. And I'd love an English dub as well. Like, what's this cat doing here and why is Squidward rocking this shirt? I need to know more. Like, now. Squidward's name is misleading. Even though Squidward's name contains the word squid, he's in fact an octopus, not a squid at all. As confirmed in many interviews and episodes by creator Steven Hillenburg, he has the traits of an octopus, a round bulbous head, and rectangular pupils, while a squid, on the other hand, has a long triangular head and circular eyes, unlike Squidward. Hashtag Save Spongebob Around 2014, Hashtag Save Spongebob was going semi-viral, as it was rumored that the show was going to be cancelled, and in order for the series to be continued, you had to show your support by reposting an image of the message. This was ultimately a big hoax though. Do you guys remember this? Floorboard Henry Floorboard Henry was a character cut from the episode Graveyard Shift. Harry's face has never been seen before. Even when he leaves his home under the floor of the Krusty Krab, he travels with a mobile section of floor to hide behind. He would have played the role of the character that took his place, Nosferatu, who was responsible for turning on and off the lights. Additionally, a gag earlier on in the episode would feature Spongebob delivering mails to him. The Nautical Nonsense and Sponge Buddies DVD features Jay Linder discussing the concept for the character and why they went with Nosferatu instead. BFBB Game Battle for Bikini Bottom is a SpongeBob SquarePants game that was released on October 31st, 2003 in North America. The game features an original storyline in which the player defends Bikini Bottom from a horde of robots created by Plankton. Three distinct versions of the game exist, with unique gameplay styles and differences in certain plot details. Battle for Bikini Bottom received mixed or average reviews upon release, but it was a commercial success nonetheless, and has grown a cult fan base with people trying speedruns within the game. A Day with Spongebob Squarepants A Day with Spongebob Squarepants, the movie, is an unproduced, unauthorized mockumentary that was distributed by Regal Films and MVD. The film was cancelled, but the creator behind the film is still planning on making the film through a crowdfunding effort. In this mockumentary, Spongebob lives above ground like all Hollywood superstars. Afraid that Spongebob is becoming old news, his boss runs a contest called Spend a Day with Spongebob. The contest makes Spongebob the talk of the town as thousands of kids enter to win. The lucky winner is Sith, and he is ecstatic about his day with Spongebob. However, the day becomes a roller coaster ride as things don't go quite as they planned. The creator of the film, who goes under the name Mr. Orange for privacy reasons, wanted to create a family friendly film, but Mr. Orange was hesitant to make the film out of fear of legal action from Nickelodeon or Viacom. But after talking with a lawyer, he was told that he could make the film if it was a parody. It would also help if it was live action, and clearly acknowledged that it was completely unofficial. After his pitch cover received positive reception, distributor Regal Films offered to help him by posting it on Amazon to see if there could be any interest via pre-orders. The film was also given a barcode while it was in pre-production. However, the production of the film was still facing budgetary issues, therefore Mr. Orange put the movie's production on hold. Spongebob freaking killed people. This entry is most likely in reference to this scene. Take a look. Into the moon, Spongebob! The moon! Can I go? No way, Spongebob! Especially after your little mishap with my whirly bird. Besides... Squidward torture. This is a hyper infamous term that is used in many episodes of Spongebob Squarepants. Squidward torture episodes have Squidward being tortured or abused by another thing or slash person slash character throughout the episode, most times without deserving it at all. I Was a Teenage Gary deleted scene I Was a Teenage Gary was an episode from the first season of Spongebob. The episode involves Squidward neglecting to feed Gary when Spongebob leaves town for the weekend. When Spongebob returns, he sees that Gary is in bad shape, calling his veterinarian, who prescribed him snail plasma, through the form of a syringe. Squidward is put in charge to inject Gary, but he accidentally injects Spongebob, turning him into a snail, which has a whole nother creepy vibe to it as well. 
Later in the episode, Squidward accidentally injects himself with a syringe, and this is where the Mandela effect comes in. Some people remember a scene depicting him transforming into a snail, similar to the scene when Spongebob transforms, but this is simply not the case, as the scene awkwardly transitions to Squidward already in a snail form, and no known copies of this supposed deleted scene have ever surfaced online. Some people point out that the scene is noticeably altered due to the fact that they didn't use the bubble transition that they often use. This is a recreation of the supposed scene. Spongebob Films As of the recording of this video, there have been three official released films based on the series, those being the Spongebob Squarepants movies, Sponge Out of Water, and Sponge on the Run, with the first one being my personal favorite, most likely because it was created early in the Spongebob franchise and production during Season 4. Spongebob Popsicle we all know the infamous Spongebob Popsicle, well at least I know Americans do. The ones that got the bubblegum eyes that make them look creepy or either that or extremely dumb. These bad boys were bomb as hell though, I remember getting them from the park ice cream truck on those hot summer days. Well, they're kind of going viral again due to a TikTok challenge where people try to find the most amount of perfectly made popsicles with the eyes in the correct position and everything. Take a look. He has pubes. There's one scene in the series that implies that Spongebob has pubes. It's most likely a gag though. Come on guys. Before moving on to the shallow waters, in this video, we're partnering up with YourZap. YourZap is the fastest growing self-care and mindfulness app in the market. They use the latest AI technology to provide a personalized feel and create an inviting and warm experience for their users. I'm personally using the app and I'm loving it. It's beginner friendly and it wasn't hard to use at all when I first downloaded it. I'm currently listening to the meditation exercises they have and it really does help me calm down. They offer really gentle narrators with soothing voices. It's so relaxing, man. Go ahead and try it yourself by going to yourzap.com slash book to get a huge 60% discount from the yearly YourZap subscription using the code book. YourZap is accessible to everyone, given their affordable pricing and compatibility with both iOS and Android. So don't be afraid to try it. Some content is free, and they also offer a 7-day premium trial. The link yourzap.com slash book is in the description, and the code to get 60% off the yearly subscription is code book. So go ahead and check it out in the link below. Bikini Bottom Mysteries Bikini Bottom Mysteries is a web series of shorts focusing on the mysteries surrounding the various residents of Bikini Bottom. The web series is primarily a parody of conspiracy theories and contains numerous clips from various episodes. The series began on November 6, 2018 on the official Spongebob YouTube channel. Spongeboy Spongeboy was the original name for the character Spongebob Squarepants. The name was created by Steven Hellenberg, but was changed to Spongebob after Nickelodeon found out that the name was copyrighted. It was already in use by a mob company. Either way, the name sounds way too generic for such a unique character. Spongebob Skin Theory The Skin Theory is the name of the many instances of the characters in the early seasons of Spongebob Squarepants being seen wearing and removing suits and false body parts from their body, and how this action is seen as normal in Bikini Bottom. This theory was first brought to the table by YouTuber Doug Wilbur in his famous video Spongebob Squarepants Skin Theory. Go ahead and check it out for more details, it's an hour in length. Spongebob watches adult videos. This entry is referencing this short clip where Gary walks in on him. Gary! Uh, I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. My leg. My leg is a stock sound effect provided by Doug Lawrence that consists of the titular exclamation and is mostly associated with the character Fred. The effect has been used throughout the series as a running gag when his leg is injured, akin to the Wilhelm scream. The season 11 episode My Leg pays homage to this gag as it's the main focus of the episode. Season 1 and 11 are currently tied with having the most amount of episodes that use the My Leg gag, with a total of 9 episodes that had it in those seasons. This is probably because the latter has an entire episode themed around it. 
SpongeBong Hemp Pants. This entry is referring to the parodies of SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBong Hemp Pants, specifically, is a stoner comedy based on the animated series, produced by VH1, that went viral on YouTube. It basically depicts the characters as straight up stoners, with Squidward portrayed as a spliff, aka spliff word, and the Krusty Krab as a crack house. I'ma be honest, I remember this shit creeping me out as a 9 year old kid, but rewatching it now, it's kinda funny. Spongebob Chinese Version. This entry is referring to another parody of the series, this time the mocking of the Chinese government and its power over the people. The oldest version I could find of this video is from 2007, coming from the website boomchicago.no. Other than that, I have no idea who the original creator was, and I don't want to visit that website in case there's viruses or something. Any prawn in this store? This is referencing a scene that was thought to be a sexual innuendo, but is now cleared up to just be a misinterpretation. Although I can't unhear it now. Take a listen. Ooh. Hello, gang. SpongeBob's bad. Let's party! Any party next door? SpongeBob wristwatches. I vividly remember getting these watches as a kid as my aunt worked at Burger King at the time and trying to collect them all. I was close to completing my collection, but I remember not being able to obtain the Patrick one. They used to come in these nice tin containers that displayed the character that would be on the watch. This was back when kids meal toys were at their peak, and the fast food chains were outdoing themselves. Missing Astrology from Squidward Shorts Astrology with Squidward is a series of Spongebob Squarepants shorts that originally aired from 2000 to 2001. They feature Squidward giving horoscopes for 6 of the 12 zodiac signs. At the beginning of every short, Squidward plays his clarinet. After that, he congratulates the birthday of one of the zodiac signs and then starts predicting at the end of every short. Squidward says, I'm Squidward, you're Nicktoon Astrologer. Says something random and then plays his clarinet again. The missing part of this entry is referring to the Virgo and Libra shorts that are still missing, though some believe that there are 12 shorts in total. Sadly, this theory was put to rest when a story broadcaster confirmed that the only ones that existed were already online. Mr. Krabs' accent. Mr. Krabs' voice is provided by American actor Clancy Brown. Brown describes the voice he uses for the character as piratey. According to Brown, Krabs' voice was improvised during his audition and it was not challenging for him to find the correct voice. Squidward Suicide. Squidward Suicide, also known as Red Mist, is a lost episode creepypasta that was allegedly supposed to air as a premiere of SpongeBob SquarePants Season 4. The episode is about the octopus character supposedly killing himself with a shotgun. The story is told by an intern for Nickelodeon. When the show's production team was reviewing what was supposed to be the season premiere, but as the footage progresses, the animators and editors become horrified by violent imagery and ghostly sound effects that weren't ever authorized to be included. The story garnished so much popularity that the series even referenced it in an episode. Take a look. Lego Spongebob videos. Go search this shit up on YouTube right now and you'll get a plethora of results. I mean, there's a whole YouTube channel dedicated to it called Lego Spongebob. Anyways, this entry explains itself, as it's mostly kids making shortstop motion animation films based on the Spongebob characters. Let's move on to the depths. Simpsons Bob. A crossover episode was teased by the official Simpsons Twitter account, but it turned out to just be an April Fool's joke by the staff, as it never came to fruition, though this left tons of fans disappointed. The Nick Hotel Spongebob Room The Nick Hotel was an all-sweet hotel in Orlando, Florida, near the Universal Orlando Resort and one mile from Walt Disney World Resort, in collaboration with the Holiday Inn. From 2005 to 2016, the hotel was themed after the cable television channel Nickelodeon. The hotel was open to the public in 2005, and the renovation cost a whopping $25 million. Each of the rooms had their own themes specific to a Nickelodeon series, from Jimmy Neutron to SpongeBob SquarePants. I guess this entry is probably trying to reference the eeriness about the SpongeBob SquarePants room or some type of lore behind it. Let me know in the comments if you have any more information on this. It sounds really interesting. The Seven Deadly Sins Theory Although the theory was debunked by SpongeBob's voice actor Tom Kenny in a Huffington Post interview, some fans believe the SpongeBob's friends represent the Seven Deadly Sins. There's some debate, but the best fits for each of the sins are as follows. Pride is Sandy, as pride is a deep satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. Sandy is deeply proud of her home country, her athletic abilities, and her career as a scientist. 
Greed would be Mr. Krabs. Greed is the selfish desire for something, especially wealth or power. Krabs fits this in perfectly, since he's obsessed with collecting money just so he can have his own riches for himself. Lust would be Pearl. Lust is the intense sexual desire. Pearl is depicted as boy crazy and obsessed with male fish stars. Envy would be Plankton. As envy is an insatiable desire, Plankton is deeply envious of the success that his rival, Mr. Krabs, has achieved. Gluttony would be Miss Puff. Gluttony is the overindulgence of food. Miss Puff is shown to adore food, from chocolate cake to pasta, and she's fat. Wrath would represent Squidward. Wrath is uncontrolled feelings of anger and hatred. Squidward hates his life, his jobs, his neighbors, and practically everything else about Bikini Bottom. Sloth would represent Patrick. As Sloth is excessive laziness, Patrick is ridiculously lazy. He is unemployed, lives under a rock, and just sleeps a lot. It has been suggested that Patrick or Gary could also flake gluttony, since Patrick also loves eating a lot of food. Gary's food bowl is commonly seen, and the episode Have You Seen the Snail features him running away after not being fed, but he's not as fat as Miss Puff or Patrick. Also, his appetite is perfectly normal for a snail. Some fans think SpongeBob could fit lust since he is so loving, but since it's been confirmed by Nickelodeon to represent positivity and optimism, it really wouldn't make any sense, making it unlikely that he represents one of those deadly sins. Additionally, his love for the world is genuine, not sexual. Nuclear Testing Theory SpongeBob SquarePants takes place in Bikini Bottom, a fictional undersea community located underneath a real-life isle called Bikini Atoll. Back in 1946, Bikini Atoll was used by the United States as a site for nuclear testing. Numerous bombs were set off there over the years. A particular notable one called Baker was detonated 27 meters underwater. This theory states that SpongeBob and his friends are all so bizarre because they are the result of these nuclear tests. Basically, creatures disfigured and changed because of the nuclear radiation surrounding them. What do you think about this theory? The Death Theory This theory is a possible explanation for what many fans perceive as a negative change in SpongeBob's personality from the fourth season onwards. He's initially seen as intelligent and capable character who is rather naive, but he becomes increasingly stupid as the show progresses. This theory suggests that the old SpongeBob died during the 2004 film's famous death scene. Since sponges can asexually reproduce babies that are like clones, it is quite possible that SpongeBob was replaced by a baby of his, which is why SpongeBob's personality changes and why he never seems to age. It also explains why he's increasingly stupid. He's a child. I'm reading this theory from the wiki, so don't think that I call children stupid. Anyways, this was later to be disproven by Steven Hillenberg himself. Patrick and Gary are cousins. Patrick and Gary are friends and revealed to later be cousins in the episode Rule of Dumb, where they show a family tree, depicting Patrick and Gary as distant cousins. The Houses and Bikini Bottom Bottomite houses are the basic homes of Bikini Bottomites. These homes mostly appear in the background. Bottomite houses are tall and cylindrical. They are also implied to be made of metal and are often bent or dented as a result. They are most likely theorized to be car mufflers as a result of human pollution making it out to the sea. Yep, never noticed this until now. The Super Sponge Game Incident SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge is a SpongeBob SquarePants video game for the PlayStation and Game Boy Advance, which was released on November 5th, 2001. Some people found some pretty disturbing images of SpongeBob Not Safe for Work pictures hidden within the game files, produced by the official game artists. Not only that, they found files with strange names on them as well. Also, during the initial release of the PlayStation version of the game, it was said that some hackers throughout certain US states replaced SpongeBob's ouch sound effect with a high-pitched voice yelling a profanity. This was discovered when players would buy used copies of the game that had been hacked and altered. Blink-182 Lost Music Video In the 2000s, MTV had a short-lived series called MTV Video Mods, where they would create music videos using video game models. One of the games they used was SpongeBob SquarePants Light Camera Pants. This was thought to be completely lost until short clips of the project started to resurface, and then a short time later, the entire video was posted online by the channel Mary Dan. Great find, Mary Dan, bro. Spongebob SNL CP Spongebob on SNL is the third episode of season 2 of Spongebob 60 Life. The plot reads, Spongebob hosts his own propaganda short, but things take a turn for the worst when the American government accuses him of having child prawn on his computer. What will he do to solve this conflict? Take a look at this. Hold him for questioning. Check his hard drive for child porn. I, I don't even have a computer! 
Yeah, that took a pretty dark turn for a Spongebob skit. Help Wanted was a missing episode for a while. Help Wanted is a Spongebob Squarepants episode from Season 1. In this episode, Spongebob gets hired at the Krusty Krab. Well, this episode is not on the complete first season DVD and the first and second seasons DVD due to a copyright claim with the song Living in the Sunlight, Living in the Moonlight by Tiny Tim, which was played during the episode. According to Derek Dryman, this is because Nickelodeon did not want to pay Tiny Tim's estate for the rights. Because of that, this is the only Season 1 episode not found on most DVDs. Dubs. The Spongebob Squarepants series has been translated and dubbed into 50 different languages for different countries. This has resulted in some dubs becoming lost media. Let's move on to the abyss. Actors Cursing. This is in reference to a viral video with 9 million views depicting the voice actors from the series saying profanities in character. Take a look. Well, if it wasn't for the Christmas shit, I wouldn't fucking work. This is the only time of the year that I fucking work. It pisses me off. It's like, you know, I'm glad to have it, knock on wood, but mother fucker, you know it's Giant Spongebob Balloon The Spongebob Squarepants Burger King Inflatable was created in 2004 by a company called Inflatable Images for a Burger King promotion for the Spongebob Squarepants movie. This promotional Burger King stunt is one of the most infamous due to its history. On November 11, 2004, when the Spongebob movie promotion started at Burger King, around 4,700 Burger King locations in the United States put up this gigantic 9-foot inflatable Spongebob. At first, everything seemed to be going fine. That was until about a month into the promotion when several Burger King locations started to report that their Spongebob inflatables were missing. This started the phenomenon known as sponge nappings. This resulted in people who had supposedly stolen these inflatables to sell them on eBay for a large amount of money or to leave ransom notes. Several news outlets and Burger King locations around the United States said that if anybody had found their inflatable Spongebob somewhere or known potentially who had stolen it, they would give the person burger bucks, which was good for a year's supply of original Whopper sandwiches. Nicktoon Summer Splash Spongebob's Nicktoon Summer Splash was a summer block that ran from 2000 to 2001 on Nickelodeon that featured various Nicktoon marathons with Spongebob and Patrick hosting, Squidward co-hosting, and Sandy in the control room. In 2002, Spongebob's Nicktoon Splash was replaced with Nicktoon's Summer Beach House, which was hosted by various Nicktoon characters, and it ended in 2003. Because the show was still around a year old this time, the animation looked stiff and off-model, due to a more limited budget than the real series. The animation would appear closer to the actual show by 2001. Controversial Burger King Ad Square Butts is an ad for the restaurant chain Burger King, originally airing in 2009 to promote the BK Kids Meal featuring animated characters Spongebob Squarepants. The commercial, which parodies Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot, gained controversy from parents due to it being too sexual for the targeted Spongebob audience. Burger King, however, claimed that the ad was actually targeted towards adults. Yummers. While a group of enthusiasts were going through the Spongebob Saves the Day games files, they noticed that they were able to find the sprite sheets were just off the frame for each of the game's zones, appearing when triggered. When they got to the Krusty Krabs' sheets, this character appeared among the other stored objects of the environment. Two separate frames for this character were discovered. The one with the face in view was Yummer 2, and just the hands was Yummer 1, which appears in a separate part of the location. After many emails were sent to the development team, they finally came out with some official statements about the origins of this character. Yum is a modeling test that was created around the year 2010. He had become a meme around the office. They used this character as a placeholder, as it was recognizable when going back and editing the work. In addition to this, they explored what this character would look like peeking around poles as Miss Puff and Mr. Krabs. They forgot to remove him, and thus the character's models still remain on the game's atlas. Before Yum's myth was debunked, many fans believed him to have some lore within the Spongebob universe. But what do you think? Was this all a huge cover-up for something much darker, like some people think? Some theorized that Yummers was a deformed Sandy. The Spongebob Prawn this entry is most likely talking about the infamous video of the adult actors in Spongebob cosplay or the tons of not safe for work art of the character. I mean either or, they both are useful for some human beings. Just One Bites Deleted Scene 
just went by as a SpongeBob SquarePants episode from Season 3. In this episode, Squidward develops an obsession with Krabby Patties after trying one for the first time, but he doesn't have the heart to let SpongeBob know. The original airing of this episode contained a scene where Squidward triggers and is injured twice by a security system in the Krusty Krab that Mr. Krabs has installed to keep anyone, including Plankton, from entering the building at night. The security system consists of a bucket of gasoline that Squidward mistakes for a bucket of water, which is spilled onto the floor before being lit on fire to cause an explosion. This scene was cut from future airings of this episode, with the reports of the scene being cut as early as 2002, a mere three months after the first episode originally aired. Initially, explanations for the removal were thought to be either to respect the victims of the September 11th attacks, which occurred less than a month before the episode aired, or to prevent children from attempting to use or ignite gas. Current showrunner Vincent Waller confirmed in a statement on Twitter on June 4, 2018 that the removal of the scene was ultimately due to a standards and practice issue and Nickelodeon being against the idea of a gag involving a match and gasoline. SpongeBob Television Sets this entry is pretty self-explanatory. At one point, they were producing SpongeBob television sets with a remote control being yellow and airy thing. Not even gonna lie, these suckers looked pretty dope. The Drowning Kid Around the early 2000s, there was a pretty popular rumor going around about a kid who tragically drowned in the ocean on his quest to find Bikini Bottom and ultimately meeting SpongeBob SquarePants and the gang. This was ultimately proven to be false, with no actual evidence to support it, and is most likely originating from the Beavis and Butthead incident, where a kid set his house on fire for trying to copy a stunt from the show. The Sponge Hinge Theory Sponge Hinge is a Spongebob Squarepants episode from Season 5. In this episode, Spongebob's holes make music in the wind, attracting jellyfish. This is in reference to a video made by YouTuber Karsten Runquist, where he posits the theory that SpongeBob's legacy will outlive Bikini Bottom's civilization, the evidence being the Stonehenge reference at the end of the episode.